Welcome to the CIS 101 video about nested loops. Now, up to this point in class, if we wanted to do change the color of pixels in a certain region, let's say that we want to black out this clock, then what we would do is we'd uh, loop through every pixel, and we'd ask the pixel, pixel for its coordinates, its x and y coordinates, check to see if the pixel is inside the box, and if it is, change the color. So let's go ahead and complete that. We'll go ahead and find the coordinates. So the x coordinate will start at 174 and it will end at 235. So that will be start here and go to here. Now the y coordinate will start up here at 62 and then just kind of finding the bottom of this box and that's 136. So you can see I have my if statement to check to see if the x is between here and here, and then it checks to see if the y coordinate is between here and here. And if they are, we'll go ahead and change the color. So we'll set the color of the pixel to black. You can see what I did down here is uh, just read the picture off of the disk and explore it. But I was able to print out the file name, which is the path of my picture, so I can copy and paste it and use it up here. Now you'll need to modify this so that it matches the path of your clock tower on your computer. So I, w I went ahead and saved this program, clicked uh, load program so we can call black box. And you can see, well, we got a picture back, right? It met, we notice we declared clock inside of this function called black box. So maybe we can try to explore our clock. And we're gonna get the name clock is not defined. So why is that? Because of the scope. Remember, uh, local variables or variables that we create inside of functions are only valid inside of that, that function. So clock can only be used inside of this blue box. But at the end of the function, we're going to return the clock. So if you notice, when I called black box, I got the picture got printed out down here because that's what the function gave back. All we need to do is save that black box in a variable. So we can call this modified clock equals black box. And when we run it, now we can explore our modified clock. And we can see that the clock has been blacked out. Now we're able to do this because our black box returned the clock. So we've seen before that uh, when we created a picture inside of the function, we saw that we can call explore, uh, and then it'll pop up a window so we can see the result. But this is a little bit better because we give the clock back to whoever called us. Then the person who called us, they can maybe make other edits. Maybe they want to make uh, turn this into a black and white picture after they black out the clock. So by returning it, we give the user options to do more operations on the clock instead of always exploring it after it's done. So in this case, we are returning a value. If I were to do explore the clock, then that would be a side effect. Now let's talk about efficiency. This, uh, this algorithm here says for every pixel in my clock picture, ask it for its X and Y location and if the x and y location happen to be inside the box, then set the color black. So that means we have to visit every pixel and ask this question about that pixel. So that's a lot of work. What if we can make an algorithm that only visits the pixels that are inside the box? And we can do that. The code might be a little more complicated at first, but hopefully you'll see how this runs more efficient because the computer doesn't have to do an operation for every pixel in our picture only the pixels that are inside of our box. So I'm making a new function called fast black box. And it does, a, we get the picture off of the disk at the beginning, then we ask the picture for its width and height. And now um, this isn't gonna be complete, but just to get us started for X in the range, and we're gonna start at zero and go until the width. Now I can ask the clock picture for a pixel at whatever X is, is and the Y will be zero, and I'm gonna set that color to black. So let's run that and see how it looks. We'll go, uh, instead of calling modified uh, or black box, we'll call fast black box. And we'll explore our modified clock. And 
we can see the box of the clock isn't getting blocked out, but at the very top, we can see that all the pixels are set to black. As long as my Y is equal to zero, we can see that we blacked out this first row across the top of the picture. So why did we do that? Well, for every X starting from zero to the width of my picture, I'm going to get the pixel at that X position and my Y position is going to be zero and that's what caused this line to get drawn across. So what I've highlighted here was that the loop that I had before and I've surrounded that by a new loop and you can see this uh, blue box here. So if you think of this blue box as black out the top row, now by adding another loop in here, and instead of always getting the zero to pixel, we'll get the zero to, we'll get the pixel at location Y. So this loop is to repeat blacking out a row for each row in my picture. This inside loop does a single row and the outside loop does every row. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens to our picture. And we can see we've blacked out the entire picture. Let's look at a little more detail exactly how this works. At the start of our function, we ask our picture for the width and the height. So we created our clock, read it off of the disk, and let's just assume that it's a three by three picture. Of course, the clock picture is much bigger, but just for this example, we're assuming that we have this three by three picture. So when we ask for the width, we're gonna get three back. One, two, three. We ask for the height, we're gonna get three back as well. Let me fix that real quick. So there we go. Now our, our width and our height are set to three. Now we can see that we have this for loop for y in range from zero to the height. So here is the list of numbers that that range creates. So we have the numbers zero, one, and two. Remember, we don't include the last one. So that's why we didn't include three in our list. So, and then y is going to be equal to the first one. So let's go ahead and write that in. So y is equal to the very first number in this loop. And just so we can keep our place, I'm going to put a little red, red line through that, knowing that we've already used that one. Next, we're going to do the same thing for our x loop right here. So we're going to get a range from 0 to the width. Well, the width is only 3. So that's zero, one, two. And here's our, um, our range, our list that range made for that. And then the zero is gonna go into the X. Now the next step is we're gonna ask for the pixel from the clock that's at the X and Y coordinates. So X is zero, Y is zero. So we're gonna ask for the pixel at location zero, zero, and we're gonna get that guy out. And he is gonna become PX. And then we're going to set px to black. So that sets this pixel to black. And now we're done with the x. So next, we um, let's go ahead and put a little red line saying we've already used that zero. And so now we're going to move on to the next x. So the next x is one. So we're going to put one into that box. And then we're going to get our next pixel. But this time we're going to use the coordinate of 1, 0, getting this pixel. Then we'll set that pixel to black. And then we'll do it one more time with 2. So now we've already done 0 and 1 for x, so it's now it's 2's turn. And that means that we're going to get this pixel and set him to black. So now that we've finished with the first row across the top, this inside loop is now finished. So we'll go on and continue and that means we're going to move on to the next loop for y. That means y is now going to become 1. So the next value of y will get put in that box. And then we're going to start this loop all over again. So we're going to regenerate this list of numbers and we're going to take the first number and put it into this box. And now we're going to find this pixel right here using x as zero, y as one. And so px will now be equal to that guy and then we'll set him black. Then we'll move on to this guy and that will cause him to get set to black. Then we'll move on to him and that will set him to black. And now the loop's gonna reset one more time 
And then we'll set this guy, then this guy, and then this guy to black. So right now, this one isn't any better than this one because we're still visiting all the pixels, but we don't have to. We can change the range of the pixels we want to visit. Notice Y needs to be between 62 and 136. So we can change this to 62 and 136. And then X needs to between, be between 174 and 235. So now instead of visiting every pixel, we'll start with Y being equal to 62 and X being equal to 174. We'll go from X being 174 to X being equal to 234. Remember, we don't do the last one. And then we'll do the next Y and we'll keep uh, doing that until Y gets up to 135. So let's go ahead and save and run this program and see if it does what we want. So you can see that it has blocked out our clock just like the previous one, but this time we didn't have to visit every pixel and we didn't even have to ask the pixels if they're inside the box or outside the box. We only visit the pixels inside the box. So when you, uh, if you try this on your own computer and you run this one and this one, you might notice that this one runs considerably faster than this one.